What's going on, everyone? Good evening. We're going to talk about agent securities lending. And don't worry, I'm going to go into this one in a little bit more detail than I normally do to try and you know paint a very simple picture for securities lending. There's a lot of talk about securities lending lately. I'm here to tell you that it's a normal, or I say normal, but quote unquote normal market activity that's been going on for years. And once you see the numbers, uh, it might hopefully change your mind and hopefully you learn something from this video. So let's watch one more explosion. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, let's go. All right, background. A securities loan is a transaction in which the lender or the securities owner temporarily transfers securities to another party, a securities borrower, for compensation. This transfer is secured by collateral, which can be cash or securities or another form of financial commitment, such as a letter of credit. So it's a common misconception that it's simply cash or collateral. No. The collateral can be cash and it can also be securities. So you can convolute and mix up the cash and the collateral. They can technically be the same thing. Cash can be collateral and collateral can be cash. And until we get some decent reporting on this, <laughs> we just have to assume fuckery. Now, when you hear securities lending, think repo, as it has the same exact effect as it is basically the same thing, swapping cash for collateral at a future date agreed upon by parties. Now, when we say parties, who is involved in these transactions? Well, there are typically three parties participating in securities lending activity. Now, this doesn't mean always. This is just typically. Number one, the lender that owns the securities, the borrower, and then a lending agent that facilitates the transaction between lender and borrower. Some lenders do not rely on third-party agent lenders, but use internal departments to execute their securities lending activity. Such internal departments may have the same incentive and risk considerations as do unaffiliated lending agents. Now, agent lending basically just makes it a lot easier for the borrower and the lender to connect and make a transaction happen because they have the third party intermediary, which uh, means if you see an agent lending entity massively lending shares, then that must mean there must not be a lot of shares left in that particular security. Now, this is one thing I want to talk about. Is lending bad? So that depends. Many types of market participants engage in securities lending. It contributes substantially to market quality, especially liquidity, through its roles in market making, facilitating trade settlement, and especially relevant lately, short selling. So hear me out. Securities lending increases short-term market liquidity by allowing market makers to increase temporarily the supply of securities available to meet demand for those securities. In these ways, securities lending is vital to smooth market functioning. So if they weren't lending, guess what they'd be doing? Using the repo market, right? Because if, if, if everyone's got their shares in a cash account and they can't lend, what's the next closest thing to lending? The repo market. It's the same thing. So I bet my bottom ass that the repo demand we see, I am firmly confident that this repo demand is directly related to retail buying and holding. I, I mean, I mean, I don't know. It makes sense based on the literacy of how lending works. So just saying, I've always thought this this whole year. I, I'm still thinking it. So let's look at this diagram here. Securities lenders. This is the typical scenario. Now, this does not mean always because remember, things can change. But in a typical scenario, this is what you're looking at. The lenders are going to be your pension funds, sovereign entities, investment funds, insurance companies, banks, and broker dealers. Your securities borrowers are going to be your hedge funds, pension funds, and banks, as well as broker dealers. Now, the lending agents, I put fidelity here. Why? Because guess what? Remember when the repo market started going off the wall, like the demand went skyrocket crazy? Guess what? It was right around mid to late April. Guess who became an agent lender? Mid to late April. That's right. Fidelity did. So now you can see if they inserted themselves in as the lending agent to intermediate between these things, which they Fidelity owns a lot of these funds, they're drawing in funds from themselves and then making extra money off of it. Is that a bad thing? No. Is it a good thing? 
I don't necessarily think th think that's the case either. I'm pretty pretty freaking neutral when it comes to securities lending. Now, this is something I bet you didn't know. Short selling can serve several purposes. In general, investors use short selling to profit from an expected downward price movement. That's one reason. Some investors may hedge the risk of an economic long position by engaging in short selling of a related security. Market intermediaries <clears throat> sometimes use short selling to provide liquidity when faced with unanticipated demand for certain securities. So if short selling contributes to liquidity, we could see how that may be a must have <laughs> looking at the fragmented market that we see on a daily basis. Now, categories of securities owners. Now, to classify securities owners, the Agency Lending Disclosure ALD standard was created and is, it is what's used, basically. The ALD standard includes 25 categories of securities owners. For the purpose of this analysis, the 25 ALD categories are going to be broken down into six distinct groups. And we kind of just covered it. So, pension funds and endowments, including ERISA pension plans, non-ERISA pension plans, corporate pension funds, state pension funds, foundations, and labor unions. Investment firms, including 1940 Act registered investment companies, other investment companies, hedge fund partnerships, UCITS or UCITS, investment trusts, common trusts, collective trusts, and other trusts. What have you seen in AMC and GME's 13F? All this shit. Banks and broker dealers, including credit unions. How about that? Government entities, including, you guessed it, Central banks. <laughs> that repo is looking a lot more like securities lending now, isn't it? <laughs> Sovereign wealth funds and uh, supranational entities. Others, whatever that means, including corporate entities. How vague. And then lastly, insurance companies. So basically all the shit we see, um, minus the, the central bank uh, and government entities, in GameStop and AMC. So keep in mind, due to the confidentiality restrictions that some security owners place on their agents, not all respondents provided categories of all their securities owners. This limitation reflects the global nature of the business, shady as fuck, shadow banking, the variation in legal constraints on customer disclosure across jurisdictions, and the voluntary nature of the pilot data collection that we will look at on the next slide. So in 2021 today, they're still developing this pilot data on the OFR, Office of Financial Research, um, to get us, you know, daily uh, short or securities lending details. The only place you can get it from is in options, on the Options Clearing Corporation, which is mind-blowing that we're lending options somehow, but anyways, nuts. I think they lend the shares to write the contracts, how it works, but still. It's a very, very, very convoluted mess, just like the repo market. Now here's the pilot data from 2015. Now keep in mind, this is from 2015. Look at these freaking numbers. Table one is the market value of securities available for lending and on loan by collateral type in billions. So the average amount of lendable assets on loan by collateral type, 9.4 trillion <laughs> in 2015. That's over a three day period. Over the three reporting days, lending agents reported on average 9.4 trillion in securities available for lending. There was on average 1 trillion in securities loans outstanding or about 11% of the lendable assets over a three day period. So they had 9.4 trillion at the time available and they were lending out about a trillion or so every three days, 2015. And that's just pilot data. So I imagine now, could you, I mean, could you imagine how high it could be now? Insanity. That's likely all they're doing to keep the market alive. It's because it provides liquidity, it provides profit and income, and uh, everybody wins until they don't. It's just to keep the music going a little bit longer. Now, table two, pilot data, securities available for lending aggregated by types of securities owners that we just discussed a minute ago. Uh, uh, obviously, investment firms are going to be the number one, followed by the pension funds that they, they themselves owned, followed by the governmental entities like your money market funds and stuff like that, insurance companies, banks, broker dealers, others, and then we have our total. Now table two basically drills down on the previous data we just looked at a little bit further to see which individual types of lenders have the most demand. 
Across the three reporting dates, investment firms on average had nearly three trillion of securities available for lending, the most of any securities owner type. However, due to existing legal restrictions, this figure may overstate the value of securities that investment firms could actually lend. So you see how it's all convoluted? We can't even trust the pilot reporting data. For example, one type of investment firm, a registered investment company, cannot have on loan at any time securities representing more than one third of the fund's total value. So of types of securities owners, pension funds and endowments had the second largest supply, which is uh, 2.5 trill on average over a three day period. But table three is securities on loan aggregated by types of securities owners. Now investment firms, 174 billion. Pension funds, 332 billion with the most. Table three reports the market value of securities on loan by the organizational type of the entity making the securities available for lending. Across the three reporting dates, pension funds and endowments on average had $332 billion in market value of securities on loan, the most of any securities owner by type. Governmental entities had the second largest volume of securities on loan, on average $327 billion. Now, pilot data. Well, I forgot to change the title. Sorry about that. Uh, this is table four, not three. Market value of securities on loan by types of securities borrowers. These are your borrowers. Broker dealers, you know, our favorite friends, were the largest borrowers, collectively borrowing 869 giggity billion in market value of securities over a three day period in 2015. Hedge funds and state pension funds together borrowed less than 10 billion. Isn't that nuts? So now you see just how effed they are. If you didn't know that already, this is mainly for more of those uh, groups that are new. Because if you didn't know, this market's fucked. It is filled with crime, and you're right in the middle of it. But guess what? You have the easiest job, and that's all you gotta do is hold. So, although the pilot cannot identify such cases, broker dealers often borrow securities on behalf of their clients. This is the share lending program they're talking about that we all turned off. I firmly believe, I'm gonna go back to that, firmly believe that that move by retail was the smartest thing we did all year. And the only, I mean, that was the only thing that's, that's had an effect on the market. And that may have been all we needed to do is turn off that share lending and move to a, a cash account and fidelity. In essence, securities lending is the crux of the market right now. It provides liquidity. It provides shares when there's no shares left to be had. And uh, right alongside repo, it's the same freaking thing. Now, the problem, they need shares. Who has them all? We do. Don't give them up. That's what, that's all we have to do. Don't give your shares up unless there is a very good reason. Don't do it. That is the, and that's not even financial advice because you're not making or losing any money right now if you switch and transfer. So why do it? Just wait, stay the course. If you have a cash account with settled shares, they cannot be lent out without your permission, period. That is likely why we see the repo demand the way it is because guess who can lend securities everyone else and including central banks so for this to occur you would either have to be on margin or unknowingly signed up for securities lending as they can't just magically unsettle your shares from your account so taking all this in when you think of the word securities lending relax it doesn't affect you it doesn't affect me it's a tool that's being used to keep the market propped, just like everything else. They have to do it, just like they have to short, just like they have to use the dark pool, just like they have to game the days to cover, just like they have to game the volume, just like they have to spread FUD all over their social media, just like they have to do this and have to do that. We don't have to do anything except sit here and hold. So let's do it. And of course, read documents if you want to. That's fun. Take it easy. Hope this helped.